Hello everyone and welcome to my video. Today we're going to build a Western Digital Lifeguard Diagnostics for DOS ISO file. So let's get started. First we're going to create two new folders. Now we're going to hit the internet and we're going to go to the free DOS website and get the tools that we need from this. We're going to go down to the next download. Here we're going to go after the floppy zip file. We're going to save this in the first folder that we created. Now we're going to go after Western Digital's software tools. Here we're going to click on support. And we're going to go after the internal drives. Here we're I'm going to click on desktop 3x5. The software we're going after As you can see, we have multiple hard drives in here, and the software works for all those and the 2x5 laptop hard drives. I'm going to click on the black. Now we're going to scroll down. Software for Windows, we are going after Data Lifeguard Diagnostics for DOS. We're going to download that, and we're going to save that in the second folder we created. Now we got all our software. As you can see, both folders have files in them. We're going to go to each folder and extract them. We don't need this folder anymore. And we don't need this one. We're going to extract this. And delete this. Now, everything here on the desktop, we know which folders are in. Now we're going to go to Open. And we're going to go to desktop. We're going after the floppy, which is in the first folder. We're going to select that and open it. We only need a couple files in here, so we're going to delete this one. We need the kernel. We don't need this one. We need the command and auto execute. This one we can delete. Now, before I go on, I'm going to rename this file here. I'm just going to add a number to it. I'm going to copy that. Now we're going to drag this out and edit it. As you can see, it says at echo off. That's all we really need on this. Everything else is going to be deleted.
Now we're going to paste the name that I just renamed in the Western Digital folder onto this and save as. Now let's just verify that it's right. And it is. Now we're going to delete this one. And we're going to put this one in here. Now we're going to go to the Western Digital folder. And we're going to drag all these files in with it. And I'm going to save as 3 dog. close that out now you can see we got our boot image we don't need this no more now we're going to reopen up our program we're going to go to the Western Digital folder drag all three of these right into this empty area and now we're going to load the boot file, which is the free DOS image that we created. And now I'm going to save as WDC 5.27, which is the latest version. Close that out. As you can see, the ISO is built, ready to go, and bootable. Now I'm going to turn around and open up this program here. Yummy. Select your flash drive. Select NTFS and wipe it. Now we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here where it says try unlisted ISO grub partition 4. Now we're going to browse to the ISO that we created which on my desktop was the first folder. I'll select that and hit create. As you can see, we've got the Western Digital folder in there in the menu list. So now all you have to do is really restart your computer and boot off your USB. But there are a few things that I'd like to point out. In some boards, as you can see, this is HCI mode, but it's also selected as SATA. That may have to be switched on yours to IDE. Also you got the option to just select native IDE to use the software. 
another effect that it's had is the G SATA which is an AHCI mode and that needs to be selected to IDE mode depending on if it's UEFI or EFI I've noticed that most EFI boards have to be selected to native IDE and don't always work in HCI mode but for the most part UEFI seems to work so far from some boards I've seen. I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.